Welcome to the Delvin Cox Experience, the podcast in which each week I am on a one-man mission to unite our culture through diversity. I'm your host, Delvin Cox, and this week on the podcast, I have a special guest, an artist, man who makes dope music, Mr. J.D. Beatty. How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Doing really good. And as always, we like to start the podcast off with the five for five. Five questions, five answers to get the ball rolling. J.D., are you ready? I'm absolutely ready. Okay. Waiting. Question number one. I think this is apropos for the day it is. What's your favorite okay. Prince song? Because today, for the, we're recording this on Prince's birthday, so. Mm. My favorite Prince song? It's, I mean, I know it's it's a basic collection, but I got to say Purple Rain. That's the one that turned me on to Prince for real, for real. Okay. And you know what I'm saying? That, that guitar solo goes crazy for me. And, oh, yeah. That is that is fire. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I love I love that. But I mean, yeah. It's gotta be Purple Rain. Yeah, I, I like Purple Rain a lot too. I I remember and I was not telling my age, but <laughs> I remember when I was a kid listening to that album and I wanna say the movie, watching the movie. I can't remember the name of the movie right now. Mm. But yeah, Prince is dope. All right. Question yeah, I didn't even realize it was his birthday today. Yeah, I, I just happened to see it earlier there. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. It's today's person's birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. If I would have known that, I would have looked up more information on you, so I came prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, buddy. Right. Yeah, I mean. Question number two. Give me your top five favorite artists. In no particular order, by the top way. Top five? Top five favorite artists? I right, see. That's a... That one, that question right there, you know, as an artist, I ask that one to all my friends a lot, and we uh, always discuss it a lot. So for mine, it fluctuates quite often. Uh, yeah. Are you talking about general artists or I, just like top five rappers? I would say general artists. General artists? Oh, damn. Now you done made it even more difficult. Okay, I, let, <laughs> let, let's make it easy. Let's make it easy. Let's go rappers, because general artists, well, like, okay, you, you we'll get... do. We'll do both of them. We'll do both of them, because I listen to a lot of music, and you know what I mean? It's good to have a, a diverse selection. That's a that's how I came up with the whole eclectic thing. But uh, my my top five rappers currently, I just said to my homie, um, you got the Young and May, Mia okay. Fontaine, J Cole, Montana Three Hundred, and uh, I forget who the fifth one was that I said. Um, but for them, for Young and May, Young and May is. Uh, Highly underrated, in my opinion. You I, know what I, I mean? I like that your choices are so diverse and so different, and they're not the normal choices that people would pick, because you know people usually say, like, Drake, Kendrick, J. Yeah. Cole. Yeah. yeah. I like your choices. You know I mean? Well, thank you. Uh, I mean, I got J. Cole in there, but that's because, like, he's, he's my, he's, like, the artist who I look to as inspiration and, like, the type of artist that I want to be. You know what I'm saying? He's always keeping it real. He don't, he don't feel the need to rap about violence all the time and guns and whatnot but he's also like just low-key and he don't really care you know what i'm saying he said from here on out my hair grows out i I, mean, I like that you know what i'm saying yeah. he don't care about what people thinking he's just being himself and he's just living his life that's why you know what i'm saying so that's why he's in my top five young and may she's just highly underrated her flows go crazy uh mir fontaine he's a very unknown artist from new jersey i mean he's not very unknown he, he's He's pretty known, but like I, he's not as known as I feel like he needs to be known. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. And then, uh, what was that? J. Cole, Younger Man, Neil Fontaine, Montana 300. Montana 300 got the craziest bars. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And then for the fifth one, damn, who was the fifth one that I that said? Um,. I don't know. I'm going to think about that one. Okay. Let's just say... Uh, let's say... Um, Jay-Z. Jay-Z? Okay. Jay-Z. Yeah, I say Jay-Z. Yeah, Jay Jay He's a good place holder. You know I mean? He's a good place holder, you know. Yeah, you can never go wrong with Jay. He's, no, no. And he's, he's one of them... The ones that he's just so successful, 
you can he's undeniable. You know what yeah. I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then my top five artists, have you ever heard of uh, the singer JMSN? No, I have not. You got about to send me some of that some of that music, man. I gotta send you him. He's a he's my he's one of my favorite singers. Um I really like uh I really like uh Tame Impala. Okay. He's pretty cool. I've been listening to a lot of him. Um I like, I like these choices, uh, by the way. I like when people give me stuff that I can like, okay, I got to go listen to some of that stuff and go go yeah, find out yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, 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 I spend a lot of time listening to, like, all types of different music. Like, I really just – and it, a lot of times I'll be feeling like, dang, I wish I could play some instruments more. But, you know what I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not well-versed in instruments, so that's why I try and make my voice and my flows my instrument when I'm rapping. Yeah, you know I feel I mean? you And that. I, like – yeah, so I, I just like, I just appreciate the music. I love the music, you know what I'm saying? All types of music. Even if it's like music that I wouldn't normally listen to, I can still, I can still get jiggy with it, you yeah, know? I feel you. My, um, a buddy of mine, we're doing a podcast with my Patreon together. It's called On Shuffle. And the whole concept of it is mm-hmm. he brings me albums that he think I should have heard that I've never heard before. Like a good example is My Chemical Romance. I never heard any of My mm-hmm. Chemical Romance stuff before. He brought it on like this past episode, and I, I love it. It was great. Yeah, so yeah. It's always cool to That's it. get stuff that you don't expect to be good, and, like you're pleasantly surprised by. It. Like, yeah, this is dope. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that. You gonna have to send me a podcast. That sounds like something I'll definitely enjoy listening to. Yeah, I got you. I got That's you. Saying. That's a good way to find new music. That's a, you know, I hate I hate people who don't want to listen to new music or d- just want to listen to the same type of music like you ever hang out with somebody who all they want to listen to is just chat and yeah just... i have <laughs> I, I, am, like... I, am, I am fortunate that my kids because of the dad because like what with, 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 me being with my kids I'm, I'm very diverse my music so when they were growing up they used to listen to stuff like michael jackson the jackson five stevie wonder yeah gladys knight they used to yeah, listen to stuff like on. um then they used to listen to like hip hop, like Dre, Snoop, um, Nas. So now that they're older, okay. now that they're older, they're oh, and also used to listen to a lot of '80s music. So now that they're older, their taste is very diverse and stuff like that. So a lot of times they're bringing me music, say, "Dad, you might like this." I'm like, "Okay, cool." Like you know, I'm, yeah. I think it's really cool that they don't. They're not just into hip hop. Like it's it's a rare moment in yeah. time where I get in the car with them and they're playing hip hop. Like okay. I like that. I like that's that. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. 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 Much. yeah. yeah. Uh, I like Anderson Park a lot. I don't know how many artists I done listed off, but you, li- you listed okay. You, <laughs> you listed five hip hop artists. and You listed three artists in general. So you, I'll give you two three more artists, artists in general. Yeah. Two more artists. All right. Uh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. You know that's a given. Yeah. 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 Michael Jackson. And. Um, Prince? Rage Against the Machine. Oh, Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Rage Against the Machine. Uh, they, the Rage Against the Machine is one of them artists that uh, was was a branch out for me that like taught me to to start listening to different type of music. Because after I started, after I heard uh, Bulls on Parade uh, and started working out to that, I was like, I like this. I like that. And then I started listening okay. to some Linkin Park and whatnot. And then I started getting into all types of different rock music. And that's how I can now, like, enjoy, like, even even a couple of heavy metal songs I can enjoy now. You know what I'm saying? Cause of, because of how, like, just hearing a, a certain artist. Yeah, I, I like that. Make you appreciate that genre. You know what I mean? So I say that. I feel you on that. All right. Question number three. Right. What is the dumbest thing you ever done as a kid? And don't say anything that's going to get us arrested. I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> I, I say that now because one time a while back on the podcast, I asked that question to somebody and they just started like saying felonies. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Like, yo, relax, relax. Like, yo, yo, we can't be like, you can't be doing that, man. We're going to get both of us in trouble. Uh, like, I remember one time we had to go kidnap this dude. <laughs> I'm like, no, we can't do that, fam. Fam, we can't do that on there. Uh, okay, so the dumbest thing I did as a kid, um, 
Okay. So I I <laughs> I used to I used to have this crush on this girl who had moved away from my school and she lived like two hours away. And uh I had been trying to talk to her for a while and she finally was like she wanted me to come over and you know what I'm saying? So I was like, Okay, I gotta make it over there. I gotta make it over there to to go visit her. But it's a two hour drive and you know what I mean, I don't have a car. I'm like sixteen. Oh. <laughs> so, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I do was I hit up all my friends. I'm like, yo, y'all wanna hang out? So I ended up sneaking out my house and taking my parents' car and going and rounding up all my friends to take a road trip. And then we drive on and take this road trip and the whole time we're smoking and <laughs> just just turning up in the car, you know what I'm saying? I get there, my friends wait for me in the car for a little bit. And then we leave and we go and we're getting ready to uh <clears throat> drive back to the house. Hey, like I'm not, I'm gonna go drop everybody off. And while we're driving, this is terrible because I feel like if my friend, my parents listen to this podcast, they're gonna <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're driving back and um because they didn't know that my my dad I, I never told my dad that my friends was with me. But when we're driving back, my phone starts to ring. And it says, it pops up and it says, pop. I'm like, oh no. It's like, <laughs> it's like three, it's like three in the morning. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, this is bad. Not only did I take the, the car, I took the good one. The one that they don't even let me drive. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. <laughs> my dad's calling me. I, I turn the music off. I look at my homies. I'm like, yo. My dad is calling me. My homie looks at me and he says, "Bro, don't even say that. That's not. That's not. That's not even funny, bro. Like, because <laughs> my dad don't play. All my friends were scared of my dad growing up. He don't play. You know what I'm saying? They're like, bro, don't even, don't even joke like that. And I'm like, mm -hmm, look, bro, this, this, ain't, like, a this ain't a joke, joke, bro. <laughs> this ain't a joke. This is my ass on the line. They said, oh. I said, should I answer it? They said, you better answer it. I said, oh, man. So I go to answer it, and then my dad, he don't even he don't even say nothing. Like, he just answers the phone and says, bring my fucking car home. Yeah! Oh and just hangs God. up. I'm You're still an hour and 45 away. <laughs> I just left. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. There's no way. Your dad about to commit a felony. <laughs> yeah, my dad about to commit a felony. <laughs> I'm like, I still got to drive an hour and a half back into town, drop all my friends off, and then and then get home. I'm like, this is... And he didn't even... And then so then like 20 minutes goes by, or like something like that, uh, long enough time for him to realize that I was far away. And he calls me back, and he was like, where the hell are you at? And I said, huh? He said, where are you at? And I look, I'm, I'm trying to look at like some street signs as I'm passing. I look at my phone. I'm like, I'm in a, uh, say some town that's far as hell. And he goes, oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, boy, if you don't bring your ass. I'm like, oh man, this is rough. I end up, I end up getting home. I get home. I'm so scared that I'm, my dad's about to fold me like his laundry that <laughs> I, I pull the car up to the driveway and then just get out the car. <laughs> and then like, I'm standing behind the car and he's standing in front of the car and he's like, what you want to do? I'm like, I'm going to head out. <laughs> he was like, that's probably the best thing you can do. <laughs> and so I left. And I went and stayed with my man for for a little while. Oh man, that was yeah, that was yeah, <laughs> that was probably the dumbest I ever felt because I was like, when I got that phone call and I looked at the time that I had left to get home, I'm like, all oh, this because I wanted some cheeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you didn't you didn't logistically plan it out. You didn't you didn't think like, man, you know what? It's eleven o'clock. <laughs> It's gonna take yeah, me two no, hours I, to get there. <laughs> two hours to get back. 
<laughs> I did not logistically plan it out at all. <laughs> I was uh yeah, I was caught lagging that day. Yeah, sure. Wo- woefully sure. underprepared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a that was a wild time right there. All right, you I like that mean? answer. But yeah, but my dad, me and my dad is cool though. He was a he was a tough dad. He was strict, but you know what I'm saying. As far as having a father goes, I wouldn't I wouldn't want no other. One. I mean, I feel like you know what I'm saying. You you got a son, so you already know a, a yeah. strong black father is is very important. Nah, oh yeah, they, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm hard on my son, but my son knows that I, I go to bat for him all the time. So, super important. I'm mm-hmm. super dope that you got that relationship with your dad. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, question number four. You can pick any four rappers, because you're going to be the fifth one, of course, to be in a cypher mm-hmm. with. Who are you picking? Mm. Being a cypher with. Okay. All right. Well, so like, I would like to say Montana three hundred, but I don't think I would even want to be in a cipher with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's too. His bars would be, would be too crazy for his freestyles. You know what I'm saying? Just off rip. I'm like, man, shoot. I need someone who I'm like. Nah, but I actually, nah. I would, I would, I would want Montana three hundred in there. Okay. You know what I'm saying he might, even though, even though he would, he would probably. Outshine me with the bars because his ciphers really go crazy. It's okay. It's 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 for the love of the art form. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want that cipher to be be the best one. Um, I would like to have who's another good bit of um some good ones out there. Yeah, there is, a, there is a lot of good ones out there. I like to have maybe like, like Chef G or um, or uh, Sleepy Hollow. One of them, one okay. of them on there. You know what I mean? I feel like I never seen them on a cipher, but I feel like they would, they would add a different flavor to it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then the game. The I like good. to have the game. He gonna take over the whole cipher. He gonna spit for thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I think he was my top five that I was uh what I, that I was trying to think of earlier. I think he was the one that I was trying to think of. I like Gabe well, a lot. Yeah, I like Gabe uh, is dope. Yeah, I like. Uh, uh, you ever listen to the documentary Two and Two Point oh, yeah. Five? Yes, I have. I have both of those albums. I I listen to the documentary, documentary Two Point Five. I listen to. Um, I, I got so many damn game mixtapes, like uh, three hundred bars and running. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are my stuff, yeah. man. That was my error. The game is that bull. The game yeah. is that bull. You know what I mean? He, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it's just because I'm on the East Coast or we're on the East Coast, but I don't feel like he be getting the uh, props that he deserves, at least over here. Maybe uh, he probably gets it on the West Side because, you know, he's like, he's like West Coast 50 Cent. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think it's because... He doesn't get the credit he deserves, not because of who, he, how he raps, because of the antics he get into, like you know the whole. He does a lot of wild some, stuff. Yeah, he's always just yeah, some wild stuff <laughs> that takes away from his. He music. does a lot of wild. <laughs> yeah, but his, his albums are fantastic. Oh yeah, he. You can tell that he he loves the art form. Yeah, you know what I mean. The Doctor's Advocate is one of really my favorite good. albums. Which one? The Doctor's Advocate. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Great album. Excellent. So, uh, so yeah, the game. And how many? How many was that? Was yeah, that that's three. three. You need that's one three. more because you're the so fifth. I got one more. Yeah, I'm the fifth. One more. Um, you know, my mind keeps going back to uh, to when Kendrick Lamar did his BET cipher. Yes. That was remember dope. that? I do remember that. Well, I think if I could take if I could take Kendrick Lamar from that time, have him on it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah, I, you know I like I mean? that thinking. Yeah, that would be that would be that would be my uh, my four. I don't I don't I know your really age. have to. Huh? I don't know your age exactly. And I don't want to call it on the podcast, but do you remember the cipher? 
with Slaughterhouse, the BET Cypher. I think it was Slaughterhouse and M, if I remember correctly. I remember watching it. I don't remember. I it's been it's been years. Yes, since I, since I listened to it, but there was a. I remember when I was in high school, I went through a phase where I wanted to like listen to all the ciphers, and there wasn't enough ciphers out there. So I yeah. remember listening to it, but yeah, I, I don't. I, rem- rem- I don't remember much of the bars though. I remember it because that's when a lot of people found out that Joe Button could rap. Like that's before he had the podcast yeah. stuff like that. But Joe Button was on that cipher killing it, and I always remember yeah. those, those slaughterhouse. I think he was on a, a cipher by himself too with a couple of people. But yeah. I, he's, oh, yeah. he's 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 clutching those ciphers. I like Joe Budden's yeah. boss. He's really good. Yeah, Joe Budden. Uh, Joe Budden be getting into it with the young rappers. Yes, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he be he be getting into it with them. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? All right. Question number five: Zombie yeah, apocalypse man. happens. Walking Dead style. You're going to take the five things with you to survive in the world. Anything you want, by the way. Your family and friends don't count. They can come with you if they want to. If you don't want them to come with you, fuck them, let them die. So, what are the five <laughs> things you want to take with you to survive the zombie apocalypse? Five things. Now, see, now this question right here, this will let you know a lot about it, man. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, five things. First and foremost, you're going to need, you're going to need a weapon, right? Yes. Now, a lot of people will say they want to take a gun with them, but nah, nah. You don't need something like like a machete, like a nice, nice shot machete. You know what I'm saying? I like it. You don't need that because because then you can chop heads off. Yes. Not brains out. You know what I'm saying? So you don't need a machete. You don't need a large backpack. Yes. Very large backpack, like like so you can like a rucksack type of deal. So you can put all your stuff in it. You know what I mean? You're gonna need that. I like that. Probably a compass. Compass is good. Good working compass. How many things did you say? Five? Five. So you got two more. Damn. Compass. Um a radio for certain. That's like okay. essential, always. In all yeah. the in all the zombie movies you see, they always gotta have a radio. Yeah, radio, radio's dope. Um, it's important. Uh, one more. One more, huh? Uh, I like that you said a rucksack, by the way. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like too many people just think that they're just going to be able to carry all this stuff with them. <laughs> you got to. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't got nothing to put it in, it ain't gonna matter. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So, fifth one, um, I would want something to like clean water, like, like a, like some kind of purifier. Something like that. Maybe, maybe like they have them. Yeah, they they definitely do. Something like that. Something like that. Or like, like some kind of like cooking like utensils, you know what I'm saying? Something okay. like that. So, so like, l- let's just say a pot. Then I think a pot would work perfectly in that situation. Like because a pot, you can use it to boil water, yeah. so you can purify yeah. it. And you can use it to cook. Yep. With. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You thinking? You thinking? You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And and worst come to worst, you smack a zombie upside the head with it. Exactly. See, yeah. You know what I mean. That's, that's like a, that right there is a multifaceted tool. Yes. I hope I used that word right. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so brother, let them let know about yourself, man. For those who don't know, who haven't heard your music yet, let them know a little bit about yourself. All right, man. Well, I'm J.D. Baby. You know what I'm saying? I, I come from Pennsylvania. We need support Pennsylvania. It's not that big of a town, but, you know, it's, it's got its it's got its thing going on with it here, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I just dropped I just dropped my uh, I just dropped my first EP called JD Beatty presents the Eclectic Collection. And basically, what that what that is is like that that is like the Eclectic Collection is just gonna be a series that I'm just gonna always do, where it's like I'm just taking different sounds and different beats and 
and different uh inspiration and putting it putting it all into just a project you know what i'm saying it doesn't necessarily have a theme or it doesn't necessarily have like you know what i'm saying a concept to it it's just a bunch of different beats with different sounding instruments and then it's just like all music that you know what i'm saying i just be wanting to listen to because that's really how i do my music you know what i'm saying i don't i i I don't I don't really make music with the goals or the intention to be like like money money isn't the number one thing. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the love of the music that comes first. So like I and like I said, I listen to so much different music and I love so much different music that I want that to be incorporated into what I'm making. So, you know, that's what that eclectic collection is. And it's and this first one is only five songs because I'm an unknown artist. I know, I know me personally. When I see the unknown artists that I'm interested in, and they drop a tape that's 15, 20 songs, I don't got the time to be listening to all that. You know what I mean? I need to be able to just hear little pieces of it. So, so right now I'm just putting a little, little singles and like EPs. I mean, I have a, I have a pretty decent catalog. I've been making. I started uh, making music, like probably a year and a half ago. I started taking it seriously about a year and a half ago. And I just been building it up, up my catalog. So that way when I do release, I can keep stuff coming. So right now I'm already planning on my next project. You know what I mean? So what got you in the music? What is what inspired you to say, you know what, I want to do this music thing because you know, it's it's not an easy field to get into, you know. Yeah. What what made you say, you know what, I want to be a rapper, I want to be an entertainer, I want to do this? Well I mean, I've been I've been freestyling and like just having fun with it and making like like quote unquote bullshit like shit that I wouldn't take serious for since I was in early high school times. You know what I mean? And so like I've always and I've always loved just freestyling and just rapping and just like listening to music. And so I had joined the military and ended up getting kicked out after like three years. Because, oh, you, uh, because, you got to tell that story. What happened? <laughs> you, you out here, Randy Orton? <laughs> yeah. So listen, I was in, um, I was in the Air Force, and I was in, uh, they stationed me in in uh, New Mexico, in Clovis, New Mexico, and that is like, do you ever watch Courage the Cowardly Dog? Yes, I have. Imagine that. And that's that's where we was at. Like oh. that it was flat as far as you can see. <laughs> Nothing else. It out was there. small small town, tumbleweed, you know what I mean? And so like it was it was just a very depressing, terrible place to live, quite honestly. And I was like, This ain't it. And so like I was I was out there for a little while and I ended up uh it was like a three month <laughs> it was like in three months. In three months, I had uh, my my best friend that I had met in the military. He had like he had like accused me of some some shit that I didn't do. Like he he had tried saying that I was like stealing from him. We were living together. He tried saying that I was stealing from him, and I was like, bro. First of all, we work at the same place. We get paid the same amount, and we live together. What am I trying to steal from? That don't even where you gonna go in your mind. <laughs> Yeah, where am I going? Where am I going to take it? We live together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, it don't even make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think it was his girl that he was with because she had she had started moving in and like you know what I'm saying. It's it's a whole bunch of it was it, it was just a whole bunch going on with that. So like that was the first thing, right? And then so then after that. We have to move because I'm like I'm not gonna keep living with you, bro. Like you, you know what I'm saying you talk crazy. We can't we can't be roommates. You know what I'm saying? You know, whatever. So I had to move. From, I'm now I'm losing my crib. I had two dogs at the time. <laughs> In the process of trying to move, my dogs ended up getting out and running away. <laughs> so I lost Damn. my dog. <laughs> I'm like this is fucked. <laughs> and then, so then I go and. And I'm already going through it. And the girl that I'm with at the time, she tells me, um, she's like, she's like, you want to come hang out? And I'm like, yeah, I'll come over there and whatnot. She's like, okay. So then she's supposed to come pick me up because I had also, my car had also 
broke down around this time. <laughs> this shit is crazy. This shit is crazy, bro. <laughs> my car broke. And the way my car broke down was so crazy because I remember I was driving and and uh, the power steering went out. Like I was driving at nighttime, cruising with some friends and just listening to music. And the power steering went out as I was going around the roundabout because I didn't, I didn't slow down. So I was just like cruising and I was going like 30 and the roundabout speed limit was like 20 or 25 and I had on cruise control. So I was like, it's nobody else was out here at this time. So I'll just go, you know what I'm saying? I can whip it. I ain't worried about it. But when I go to do that, the power steering goes out. And my wheel, my, my shit locks up. I'm like, what the hell? And I, I couldn't take it. I couldn't, like, stir, steer it fast enough. And I hit the curb, and I was like, boom, boom. And my wheels was already kind of fucked. So when I hit the curb, it just broke my whole wheel off. And the car, like, oh. fell off to the side. And I'm like, oh, my. I'm like, bruh. And then I, like, stopped. And I look. And I just see my wheel going down the road. And I'm like, <laughs> It's when it, outrageous. When it rains, it pours, <laughs> brother. <laughs> so, so I'm waiting on. So that's how my that's how my car was broken down, and I'm waiting on this girl to come pick me up because she just told me that she wanted to uh she wanted to hang out. So that I'm waiting for a while. She ain't come, so I called her, and I'm like, "You still coming?" And she's like, "Yeah, my ex just uh my ex just got back from um his deployment though." And he's, uh, we're, we're talking about something because she was going through a separation, like a divorce. They were separated, but the divorce wasn't finalized. So I'm like, okay, who? Well, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, you know what I'm saying, controlling type. So I'm like, well, you know what I'm saying? We together, so I'll try, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going to not trust you for no reason. So <laughs> I was a fool. Delvin, I was, I don't know why I did that. I was <laughs> foolish of me because another like 45 minutes go by and I'm like, this bitch must think I'm stupid. <laughs> I get in my car and I got to drive over to her crib and, uh, and I walk in and, uh, and they just in there fucking. And I'm like, this is outrageous. <laughs> hold on, so, uh, hold on, hold on. You have, you have to clarify. How did you get over there? Because you said you fucked up your car and you went over there? Oh, yeah, I was over at my homie's crib and I told him the situation. And he was like, you want to go over there? So I was like, I was like, yeah, bro, I need to go see, like, I need to, because she ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got to go see if she really acting out like this. And he's like, yeah, here's my keys, bro. He let me use his car. So I go over there. I don't know what I'm saying. The door is unlocked. I walk in. They just in there getting it busy. I'm like, yeah. You. And like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the boy just came back from a deployment. So I ain't really trying to fight him because when you're on deployment, all you do is work out. And at this time, I got so much other shit going on that I ain't been working out. So I'm <laughs> like, I just took the L. <laughs> yeah. You, you had, uh, you've had a wild time in the military, man. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, just had like a string of bad luck. <laughs> if, if, I tell you what, bro. But people tell me like, do you wish you would have stayed in? I'm like, hell no. I was having <laughs> a bad time, bro. Yeah. I, like, it's not to say that you can't get in there and like have a good time and like be successful and like, because I feel like if I would have went to any other base, I would have been cool. But all that shit going on, I can't even go to like the beach or nothing and just like you know what I'm saying, sit down. And just like think of sadness. So then after all that, after all that happened, I was like, forget this. I'm about to start smoking again. So I started smoking weed. Next thing I know, they piss test me. Yeah. My, my uh, commander was like, my commander was like, you can try and go through these processes to uh, to stay in if you want to. I was like, that's not even worth it, my boy. Just go ahead and boot me. Uh, <laughs> I ain't. <laughs> It just seemed like you just had like, like you broke a glass mirror or something like that. It just had. Yeah, for real. I was like, this is outrageous, dog. You it, know what I mean? It reminds me of my boy, my friend who was, I think he was in the army. His name is Al. He he was on this podcast for it. Um, he had a period of time in his life where just everything bad was happening while he was in the military. And he would message me of like, yo, what is going on? And it was so crazy. Like, he'd be like, I think one time he asked me for some money. I'm like, 
get the fuck out of here. That's not happening. Comes find out he was like, whatever bad happened to him was 100% what happened. I would, you, it, was, it was shit so wild that was happening to him and so bad. If he, if you wouldn't have saw it yourself, you would not have believed it. Yeah, you would be like, ain't no way, bro. But <laughs> you're witnessing him go through these problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it's so wild. So you, you got out the, the military. Did you, is that when you say I'm going to do this music shit seriously? Yeah, so I got out the military. And at that time, uh, when I got out the military, um, I was like, I was really just like, freestyling was how I would like cope. And I was just like sitting in my car, listening to some beats and just freestyle. And I was just like vent, you know what I'm saying? I just talk my shit. And like, uh, I remember it was, it was, it was a couple of times too many people was telling me like, yo, you need to make some songs, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you, you gotta do something with that. So I'm like, all right. So then I decided I'm gonna start, you know what I'm saying? Making some, so then I start like writing some songs and whatnot. And, uh, and, but at this time, I'm like, cause once I got out, kicked out of the military, I was like, I was kind of, I was kind of messed up. I ain't had no money in my pocket. So I started like doing, like getting into the streets and whatnot. And so like, you know, I was, I was just doing a bunch of bad stuff. And I was like moving all around. Yeah. Hustling. You know what I mean? But see, the thing is, the thing is, if I'm being quite honest with you, I would not survive if I stayed in the streets. I, I'm too much. I'm too much of a happy-go-lucky, joking type. I like superheroes. You know what I'm saying? Oh. The show that I'm watching right now is Young Justice. It's a whole cartoon, and that's what I'm really into. I be getting hyped up with. Like, so like what, the street what season you on, on Young Justice? I'm, since you mentioned it. Oh, I just started. I'm I'm still on season one. Oh, you wait till you, you know get to mean? the further season. That's, that's a great series. So the, which one? Wait the till further you get season. Yeah, further season like season three, season four. Are great. It's, it gets really good. Oh. Well. Man, I'm I'm enjoying season one. So like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm, but, I'm already I'm already imagining. But yeah, I, I I feel what you say about that. Like, as the person who's was wow, this is way when I was way younger. Like, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in Miami, and mm. in Miami you got like you know, I I grew up in Liberty City. That's a straight up hood. The streets. Yeah. You learn real yeah. fast. Either you got to be a a hustler or you'll get hustled. So. Yeah. Me being that kid, when I was a kid, I learned real quickly. I didn't want to be a hustler, and I didn't want to hustle <laughs> because yeah. I see where, the, where those paths went at. And like you know, it's kind of hard yeah. to be like, "Hey, I want to be on this corner," but at the same time, I want to, I want to watch Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. You I, know what I'm saying? I, and like, uh, what was you saying? I, I, I would make a terrible drug dealer. <laughs> I'm not gonna even, I ain't gonna front like, nah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to sit on this corner all yeah. day. This shit's you know hot. What I mean? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, you know I, I can't saying? do it. And I got, I got family who is like, who is like really into it. I won't. I try not to specify for yeah. for their sake, but well, <laughs> you know, well, like I, I got family. I, who, I, I will say it for my my family because the ones who did the crimes are gone now. But I grew up in a family of cops. It's street dudes. Mm -hmm. So like half my like my brother's a cop. Yeah. My brother's been a cop for like twenty years now. But my uncles, I yeah. had uncles who were big time drug dealers, cousins who were drug dealers and things like that. So I've kind of seen yeah. both sides of it. It was like, eh, I don't like either one of those yeah. sides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that's how it is for me. Cause I got I got family who uh who, who was big time drug dealers and then they got locked up for a while. And when they went into the prison system, they see they see my uncle. <laughs> Exactly. And seeing him working there, working there, and they're like, "Oh!" But they couldn't act like they knew each other. They had to act like they didn't know each other at all. But like, you know what I'm saying? So it was like literally both sides. Like he's in prison and he's working in the prison. You know what I'm saying? And so like, but like I tell them, I tell them like, "Yo, like, not everybody can do that." It's because you have to, you have to just be ready to talk to anybody at any time. Like I, I, I mean, for me personally, bro, I have terrible communication. And I just don't like talking to people that much. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So like, surprisingly, I don't want I, people hitting me up for the for their products. <laughs> surprisingly, I'm, and it's crazy for a person who does a who does a podcast. I am very similar that way. Like when I when I, when yeah. when I am off the podcast, and if I don't yeah. know you, I don't want to talk to people most of the time. Like I don't feel like talking. <laughs> 
Like, just want yeah, to sit there and relax. Like, like, it's hard. It's hard for me to try and network. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be on Twitter, like, kind of like talking to people. But see, with, with you, it was it was pretty easy because you have you have you were on Who Would Win a couple times. And yes, uh, at my job, my 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 job a little uh, a little while ago that I used to work at, I could have my headphones in and like so I after a while. But I, it was it was all day because it was a warehouse uh, shipping, and uh, so all day I had my headphones in and doing my doing my thing as I'm like picking stuff and whatnot. And uh, after a while, bro, I'm like, I don't I don't really want to listen to music. I want to listen to like you know what I'm saying something else other than the yes. music that I've been listening to. You know what I'm saying ten hours of music nonstop. So then I started listening to podcasts, but I wanted to find some shit that would interest me, and I found who would win. And then I was like, I really enjoy this, and I like the people and the chemistry. And then I heard you on it, and I, you know, saying you talked about your podcast, and then I started listening to your podcast, and I was like, this is pretty interesting. So like, with networking with you and I, it was literally just like, just like talking on Twitter, like you yeah. know what I'm saying little stuff here and there, and it was it was really cool with it, you know what I'm saying. So like, I just hope that that's how networking can go for me that, for everything else. <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly how you do it, brother. That's, you just kind of like find like, that's how I got to know pe- a lot of people in podcasts and stuff like that. People see my followers and like, Oh, he must be famous. No, yeah, it's not I'm famous or not like that. It's just that when I do a podcast and two, I've always been open enough to talk to any and everybody and have conversations with them. And we end up following yeah. each other, becoming cool. I think that's kind of, that's kind of networking. Like, Hey, I'm just yeah. a guy who does a podcast. People like people like the podcast, and I just mm-hmm. interview people who are cool. I I interview people who I want to interview, and I think I always thought you were an interesting, cool dude. And then we when we had the conversation about your music, I'm like, oh, you can definitely get come on the podcast talk about your music, man. I, I like I like hip hop, so why would yeah. I not want to talk about music? I, I'm always open to have a conversation about music and stuff like that. I think your music's good. I think it's good. And I think it's your story uh, yeah. is interesting so far from what I'm hearing. Like, yo, this is dope. You're a cool, brother. Yeah, yeah, man. I try, I try and just keep it honest, bro. Genuine, genuineness is really, really what I try and be genuine. Uh, genu- I don't think genuineness is a word, but Close being enough. genuine and <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just being true to myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, I was in the streets for a little while, but like I already know that ain't for me. I got family who be in the street, you know what I'm saying? But like at the end of the day, like I just am making music for 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 me and the people that I'm around. Like I like like my friends, my friends, my my best friend's wife is is one of my biggest fans and supporters. She like she plays my music all the time. I send them my tracks that I like when I get out the studio, I send them my tracks like, yo, listen to this, this jump crazy. I was just going crazy in the studio. And she'll like listen to them all the time and then like when we're hanging out if she's on the ox court she'll be like let's listen to some jd Beatty." and i just like you know what i'm saying it's just that when you, i feel like when you're real and you're just who you are the love that you receive is is natural and so it's true you know what i'm saying like like so so like i just feel like you know that's, I like that's how I, that's how i want all my that's how i want all my all my music and all my fans to be, you know what I'm saying? I don't want no one feeling like they had to portray them, themselves to be super gangster or, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you listen to my music and you in the streets, you can be in the streets listening to my music. If you just want to listen to my music after, like you said, watching the episode of Dragon Ball Z, you can do that because I'm, I'm, I done seen, I done seen so much going on and then, been a been a witness to so much and been involved in so much that my perspective is vast. You know. Let Let me ask you a question. Because you're, yeah. you're in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. What is the music scene like there? Because I, I I don't know if I heard too much about Pennsylvania's music scene. I don't know if I'm hip on it. So what is uh, it like down there? I think I think um for me for me. Personally, the two biggest artists that came out of Pennsylvania um, would probably be Meek Mill and Lil Uzi. So, like, okay. you know, um, Meek Mill is Meek Mill is one of my one of my favorites. I like because Meek. I mean he gets yeah I mean some people don't like him because they say that he be yelling a lot but he doesn't yell as much as he used to. 
<laughs> but <laughs> when you listen to his old stuff, he do be yelling a lot. Yes. <laughs> My boy be out here yelling at you, making you feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, bro, what, did I make you mad or something? <laughs> <laughs> so so that's the kind of era, era you guys are in, that, that Meek Mirror era? I know people were, people think, I guess Pennsylvania, that makes sense, yeah. Because when I yeah, think of I Meek, mean, I think of Will. When I think of, uh, like, Meek, I think of Philly almost. Yeah, yeah, because that's, I, will, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's his city, you know what I'm saying? Meek and, and a little Uzi. That's that's both both yeah. of them are from Philly. Um, we don't honestly. There's not there's not as many artists to come out of Pennsylvania that have been super big. That I mean, who else? Um, Wiz Khalifa, Wiz Khalifa claims Pennsylvania because he claims like Pittsburgh and whatnot. But like his family was um his family was in the uh, I, I want to say the Air Force, and okay. uh, he was actually born in like North Dakota. And but he moved to Pittsburgh at a young age and just always like claimed Pittsburgh as his um that, that as makes, city. That, you know that I mean? makes sense to me though. That makes sense. I feel like you're allowed to claim the place you grew up in. Like you grew if you were born in like China, yeah. but you grew up in the United States, I I'll say, okay, you, you grew you you're from the United States. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The United States. I was I, I was upset when I found out about it though, because I was like, damn it. I wanted him to be born, even though, like, you know what I'm saying, I well, agree with him, he's, he's, he's a Pittsburgh dude, because he, you know what I'm saying, he grew up here and whatnot, but, like, you know what I'm saying, it's just, damn it, be born and raised. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so let me ask you, what artists inspire you, knowing that, like, what you mean, like, which, uh, like, what, which artists, like, or in yeah, general, in general, like, when you were growing up, you were listening to hip-hop, who, who were the artists that were inspiring you, like, yeah. I want to be like this dude. Oh dude. man. Okay, so uh, I already told you how like J Cole, J Cole is is one of those one of those ones who like is just very. I mean, listen, J Cole is a light skinned dude. I'm a light skinned dude. Yes. J that Cole, is true. J Cole was around stuff, but didn't want to be in it. I was around stuff, but didn't want to be in it. Gotcha. J Cole. Has an emphasis on education. Now I ain't go to college, but I feel like if everybody should educate themselves on things that they're interested in, you know what I'm saying? Education. I mean, I'm not necessarily a school dude. I don't. I never liked school, but like you know, I always liked learning. I didn't like school because I feel like they don't be teaching you the right stuff. But I I like learning about stuff when I feel like it's important or it pertains to something that I'm involved in. You like the pursuit you know of know knowledge. But not necessarily the pursuit of knowledge in the school. But I like. I agree with that. Yeah. I, 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 I think that makes well, sense. Well, because like I remember in, when I was in school, they 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 had me in in the one math class, and the we had a whole like half a semester where we learned about imaginary numbers, the yeah. square root of negative one, yeah. I. And, I like that was the thing. It was I, the square root of negative one. Like, what, what the hell am I learning about this? But I don't. Really... <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm what saying? I don't know how to do my fucking taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all got me learning the square root of negative one. Oh, I think man, I, this type of stuff. I think that's a valid complaint that a lot of people have. That how when we go to school, they teach us things that we will probably never use again. But yet again, yeah. there are some people who don't know how to do taxes or, or write a checkbook and simple things like that we don't learn, that we probably yeah. should be learning in school. Exactly. You know what I mean? But um, aside from J. Cole, though, that uh, was my inspiration, 50 Cent was a, was a, was an inspiration. Um, oh, that, that was an era. That G-Unit era, that was a yeah. good era in rap, man. I used to love G-Unit. The, the song that um, really, really, I think one of the songs that really did it for me was what 50 Cent was um He was on Eminem. I think it was, I want to say it was like Relapse. It's the album where his face, it's just his head, but it's like, it looks like a bunch of pieces are making up his face. You I know what I mean? Relapse. And I'm pretty sure, I think the song is called Psycho. 
honestly, that song might not even be on the album because when I was listening to it, I, I was I was illegally downloading my stuff. Uh, you remember uh, <laughs> LimeWire? Oh yes, I do. And I was using I was using LimeWire and whatnot at the time, and uh, so so, uh, but the song was Cycle and. I'm pretty sure it was called Psycho and, and 50 Cent was in it. And I just remember listening to it thinking like, like, damn, like 50 Cent just be like, he just be doing different stuff. Like he just, his his music was a little, it, it just, the fact that he was on that song with Eminem just was a little different. Yeah. Like I was like, I was like, that's cool. I like that. You know what I'm saying? And 50 Cent, I like him because he's also made like a whole cinematic universe for drug dealers. Yes, Crazy. that is true. <laughs> okay, the um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking up the song right now. The song is on what fifty cent? It's on a fifty cent album. I'm trying to find out which album it is. I see it. It's on. It's actually on an album. I don't know which album is it. This, I think this is until I self destruct. Until I self destruct. I think it's on this album. But yes, Psycho is one hundred percent on there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that John. John, I remember listening to that and just thinking, that's a that's a that's a different sound right there. And then um, he had another song, Heartbeat. That's a great that, song. Uh, with you know that song, yeah, that John, that John, that shit was crazy to me. I'm gonna you give you a, a good fifty cent song to look up. Um, okay, it's an older one. It's G Unit. It's um, it's called I'm a Soldier. You know the Eminem song that is, that's on um, the Eminem show. I'm a soldier, yeah. but it's a G-Unit remix. So instead of having M on it, M just does the chorus, and it's G-Unit rapping. It was on a 50 Cent mixtape. It's so dope, and it's really good. Is it called? If you, if you, uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to screenshot the search that way. You're probably going to you're probably gonna have to find it on case. YouTube because it was yeah, on a mixtape. Yeah, because I just thought about it because it, it was a remix. So I just screenshotted the, the search, so that way I'll be able to look it up later. No, I mean, because I definitely want to check that joint out. Yeah, it's, it's a I low key, joint. I low key really like, really like, like I'm, I'm, I'm upset that that the game and Fifty Cent separated. Yeah, like I wish that they would. I would like them to get back together and make like a collab tape. That would be dope. That would be dope. That would be dope. You know what I mean? Like, see, this is the problem that I have with the rap industry, man. They don't do enough fan service. Yeah, Marvel is starting to do it with with like their, their shows and their movies and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? But like the rap game needs to start doing fan service. J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar teased us years ago with a fucking collab tape and never dropped that shit. I've waited freaking years for this shit. And they just they but I can't even be mad at it because J. Cole said at the end of it, uh, it was the Black Friday joint. You ever listen to that Black Friday with J. Cole and Kendrick? Yes. That's yeah. a good joint. And at the very end of it, J. Cole says, J. Cole says, um, when you and K. Dot go and drop, bitch never, they can't handle two blunt niggas this clever. <laughs> but like, I can't be that mad at it because he said, bitch never. <laughs> he let him know. He let us know. But like, Man, I, I do. Just, I do agree with you. Give us what we want. I you do agree with you. Just give us what you want. What we want. Yo, speaking of speaking of J Cole and Kendrick, did you listen to um? Did you listen to uh Kendrick's new album? Yes, it's it's really what you, good. What did you it's, think of it? It's fascinating. I don't know how. I, I talked about it, like I said, on my Patreon because <laughs> I talked about it with my son because he's a big Kendrick fan and things like that. His album yeah. to me is art. I don't know if I can like rate it like other albums because there's so many things that touch on so many different emotions and so many different things that black people have to deal with and a black man has to deal yeah. with. It's hard to yeah. listen to at times. But I think yeah. it, it's meant to be like that. And I think that's true, a true form of art. When you can look at something like yeah. it's you can't really grade it. <laughs> it's like I don't know how to, I don't know how to yeah. feel about it. It's a, it's a, di yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a different, I was talking about it with my homie and I was like, it's a different type of, it's a different type of music. Cause like I can appreciate it, but like, as far as looking at it musically and as like, if I want to like, as something, cause I, I feel like it's almost, it's almost as if 
Kendrick has created a, a new sub genre of hip hop where yeah. it's like this isn't necessarily something that you want to listen to, but it's something that can educate and and inspire. You know what I'm saying? So I was discussing it with my homie and I was like, I don't really know how I feel about it because I feel like I don't know. It just wasn't what I really after five years of waiting, I wanted I wanted Ken I wanted I wanted Kung Fu Kenny to snap. Yeah. And I, I feel I'm, like a lot of it was more mellow tone. It was different. It was real it was real life life, reality based and at some points, just like reality, it was uncomfortable. Like there was moments in the album yeah. like, Ugh, I don't know if I can listen to this song again. This is really uncomfortable <laughs> here. Like, like I can't remember the name of the song, but them arguing over the track and stuff like that. We cry together. We cry together. Yes, there about. you go. So it's yeah. like, oh, I don't know if I can hear this song again, but it's fascinating. It's creative. I've listened to that song a couple of times. That was one of the ones that I've listened to more than once, just because her performance on that is just so like. Um, it reminded me a lot of you from uh, what was that, Pimp a Butterfly? Yes. That track where he was where he was drunk and talking about uh, suicide. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of that song because it was it was just so raw and like just like <clears throat> you know what I mean? <laughs> I get <it>. like, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I listened to it a couple times because I was like, damn. Like her performance on that joint was crazy. I was like, I really, I really enjoyed. I felt like, I felt like I, I was really listening to a damn domestic argument. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that was the point of it. Just so uh, uncomfortable conversation that you just happen to be in on. Yeah, man, it's just crazy. So but, let's let's talk about your album a little bit. Yeah. What was the process like making your album, man? Like, how did you get the beats? What made you like even oh, want to man. make the songs and stuff like that? So, honestly, dog, I had I never I didn't even go into it with like an album in mind. I just went into it with like the idea that I didn't want the number one thing I don't want my music to be is repetitive and sounding the same. Like, like I don't. <laughs> See now that I'm in now that I'm trying to make music, it makes it makes it very difficult to comment on other artists. But like for instance, the baby, I like the baby a lot. But one of his biggest criticisms from from people is that he doesn't he, switch his flow up and that he makes the same you know, song and everything. Yeah, everything sounds the same, and that's one of the biggest things that I do not want is for people to say that all my shit sounds the same. So. With the eclectic collection, I was uh, it was literally just of all this time of me making music, I just was picking songs that I thought would sound different. Like, like I'm talking about, like I would try and pick songs. Like I go on, like so the way that I find my beats is I go on YouTube and just look up a type of beat. You know what I'm saying? And then I find it, and I find one that I like, and then even if I don't make a song of it, but I like it, I'll go to, like, that engineer or that producer's page and, like, scroll through their stuff or go to the website and, like, look through their stuff and then, you know what I'm saying, go from there. And so, like, I would try and find the beats that sounded like they would never be on the same project and put them all into one. That way, uh, that way, like, when you're listening to the album, if you're like, I don't like this, and you skip it, the next song isn't going to be something that is on the same type of time. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be like you're listening to a slow song, and you skip it, and it's another slow song. Now, on the Eclectic Collection, it's only five songs, so I wanted to have it kind of have like a uh, like an art. So it starts off, the first one, just what it is, that's just like bars. Like, I wanted to have a song that was just bars, just like, as soon as you listen to it, first line is a bar. So, like, the first line, open it, this beat is water, and I'm walking, but don't call me Jesus. I ain't walking on water. I'm not no God, but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This beat, you get it. It's a bar. I like it. That's how I wanted the first one to come out. You know what I'm saying? And I have that first track. It's like a dun, 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 like a, like a very, you know what I'm saying, bass-heavy, uh, 
know what I'm saying? Something for me to like get my bars across on. So that way people know that I'm not just like making flowy, sing songy music. I can spit too. And then the next one is Real Friends. And that one, it went from that hype intro straight down to a very serious, uh, uh, like, heartfelt song where, like, I was talking about, like, friends who have, who have just done, did me, did me wrong for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, people who just, you know what I'm saying? It was, that was, that one was, well, it was heavily influenced by that time that I was telling you about when I was in the military yes. and, like, everything was going wrong. Like, all this pain, I've been going, and then I started, like, getting into the streets. Either the system or in the streets, you pick and choose. You know what I'm saying? I'm either in the Air Force or I'm in the streets, or if I get caught up in the streets, I'm in jail. It's either the system or the streets. You know what I'm saying? So that's like how it. that one was. And then from there, it went to Addicted, which is, uh, I just wanted that one to be like, I wanted a real heavy auto-tune sound. Like something that was like, um, something kind of like, like some young thug type or like some fucking, just something that was like real heavy auto tune, but like was just like a little, a little different. So I like, I tried to put a lot of inflections on my voice and whatnot on that one. And then from there, I went to toot it up, which was just like a, and each one of these are getting more progressively like hyped up, you know what I'm saying? Like more, more, more tempo, more, uh, more energy in them, you know what I'm saying? So then I went to uh, toot it up, which was like, was like I wanted that to just be like a like a party song. Like, bitch, I'm tooted up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something that you can just get turned up feeling to. You know what I'm saying? And then after that one, it goes into the Eclectic song, which was, Eclectic was actually the first song that I ever recorded when I decided that I was going to take music serious. Like, I had just been writing a bunch of music, and then I had, like, four or five songs finished that I didn't record, but they were just written and they were just ready to be recorded. And I um I had came home to Pennsylvania and I was in Harrisburg and I went to uh the Pro Sound Studios with my brother and a bunch of my cousins and uh whatnot. And I go in there and I, I start making this song. And at first like I wasn't I wasn't like like I, it was, it was nerve wracking. You know what I'm saying? It's the first time being in the studio. I'm like, oh shit, like, oh, man. And there's all these people in there, so I'm like, oh, I'm trying to do my thing. My brother comes in with like the blunt, and he's like, he's like, man, you a rapper now, nigga? Do you? <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like, I grab the blunt. I'm like, let me hit that. Let me hit that. Uh, 1947, real quick. Take a swig of that. Passing it. I'm like, all right, bro. Let's get this shit. You know what I'm saying? They, they drop the beat. I'm like, I'm gonna be collected. The way I do it, I'm not respect, bitch. You know what I'm saying? From there, I just started doing that song. And then, like, when I was doing it, my brother, I could see him, like, it was a it was a big window right there in the front. So you could see everybody else and the engineer who was, like, in the studio and whatnot. And I just see them in there getting hyped up. And they're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And then at one point, I said, I said, uh, when the beat does the whole switch up and everything, uh, I said, I said, eh, I was in the military, so you know, I won't miss. And my brother went nuts, he was like, He just said he was in the military. Oh! <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I did my shit, and then I get out, I got the studio, and uh, after, after making that song and whatnot, and I'm talking to my brother, and he's like, he's like, you know, what I'm saying, really telling me like, oh, you gotta, you gotta take this shit serious, bro. You gonna, if you are gonna do this, bro, you gotta take it serious. You gotta like, you know what I mean? This is what you, this is what you want to do. This is what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, bro, if my family, if my family supporting and co-signing, and then, and then he had sent it to my dad, and my dad, my dad only, my my dad, my whole life growing up only listened to like gospel music and shit. Because, like, after I was born, my dad, they, like, my mom and my dad, they told me that they, like, changed their they lives. Like, they, like, well, not, like, after I was born. After they got together, probably, I think, is what it really was. Because I was born a year later. But after they got together, they, like, they, like, started to, like, become who they are now as deeply religious. grown, mature adults. Yeah, yeah. Became gotcha. more religious and whatnot. And we was going to church and whatnot. So my dad only listens 
my dad, my whole life, only grown up, only listening like gospel and like old school, old school jams. You know, so he didn't like. I had to find the hip hop and shit myself. Yeah. Anita Baker, <laughs> you know what I mean. Shirley Caesar yeah. stuff like that. He was probably listening to he, Shirley Caesar. Oh yeah. my goodness, Devil yes. Cox, <laughs> you the man. You <laughs> you are truly a cultured individual. Thank you, know you what brother. Man? Shirley Caesar is the truth. Yes, but let me Thanks. tell you. I'm saying yeah. everybody else is snoring from the greens, beans, tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? But my dad only my dad only ever listened to gospel and whatnot. And so uh after I did that song, my brother my brother Marcus sent it to him. And my dad, I remember like like it was like a day or two later, I'm just chilling, I'm listening to my song and I'm in like and my dad calls me up and he's like he as soon as i answer from like hello he's like josiah that song you did so I was like <laughs> telling me you gotta send it to somebody you gotta listen we gotta do this we gotta do that i'm like that's, that's the you know what I'm saying that's the music industry is a little different all right we gotta we gotta calculate how we go about this but you know what I'm saying after I realized that I had the support from them and my family and everything, then I was like, Yeah, I gotta I gotta start I gotta start taking it serious. And then like ever since then, like every every step forward that I take, I have more people telling me that I need to keep taking it forward. Now I also have some people that, you know what I'm saying, give you backhanded compliments and tell you that, you know what I'm saying, you should do this or that. But at the end of the day, like I just take in what I want to take in. If it's positivity, I'm taking it in. If it's constructive, I'm taking it in. But negativity, fuck out of here. I ain't got time for that. Yeah, I think that's the perfect way to end this, man. Keep doing your thing, brother. I'm rooting for you. Thank you for coming on, man. Hell yeah, man. This has been a man, blast. Listen, I hope you have me on another time. Next time I'll, I drop, when I drop my next album, you're going to have me on again. I'll I was really going to say that. I'll myself talking to you. I was going to say you're welcome back on this podcast anytime, brother. You don't even have to have an album to promote, brother. You're just welcome back on. Man, don't tell me that because I'm going to be trying to hop <laughs> on your podcast all the time, bro. <laughs> no problem, brother. This has been a blast, oh, man. man. Final sure, question for bro. you. Yes, sir. If somebody who's listening to this album, yeah, they got one shot. They got to pick one song. What's the song they should go to? Ooh. Woo. Cause you know sometimes all right, that's listen. all it takes. Sometimes it's that one song that people go to and make them all listen to the whole album. So what's the song they gotta go to? Tell you like this, man. If you want, if you want something that's just gonna, if 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 you want to hear a song and you're like, I don't think this dude's gonna have bars. Listen to just what it is. If you want to hear a song that you're like, you've had, you've had fake friends but you know who your real friends are and those and you cherish them you gotta listen to track two real friends if you want something that just sound real cool my personal favorite my personal favorite right now is track three addicted um that one i talk a lot next time i hop on the podcast i might have to tell you more about it but i talk a lot about like my my experiences with hallucinogenics oh <laughs> we definitely gotta do that episode <laughs> That's that's what that's what that song was about was like hallucinogenics and it was also tied into like my 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 time in the street life and everything and that's that's what that song was about so you know what I'm saying but um if man I don't I don't know I mean shit track the album's only 15 minutes long completely you can listen to that shit on your way to work. <laughs> that's a good point you know, I like that answer <laughs> alright man you know what I mean definitely but yeah man thank you for coming for on sure. brother let them let know to find you at me, dog. let them know to find you before we Listen, go y'all can follow me on Instagram at King Beatty K-I-N-G B-A-I-T-Y y'all can find me on Twitter at J.D. Beatty I feel like that spells itself uh yeah, man. Uh, Facebook is a Josiah Beatty or JD Beatty. He's the one. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can just find me. More importantly, though, y'all gotta follow me on Spotify and Apple Music. That's that's where that's. <laughs> Don't pay attention to the fact that these are clip-ons. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I think that's perfect, brother. Yeah, man. 
Fun. Yeah, man. Hey, Delvin Cox, man, listen, I appreciate you having me on the podcast, man. It has been a blast. I, I truly hope that we get to do this again sometime. We will. Definitely, and brother. I'm going to be I'm gonna be letting people know about the podcast myself. I truly enjoy all your episodes. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Listen, her, learning about movies, learning about music, learning about whatever, bro. I'll be listening to your podcast, bro. It's five stars out of five stars, bro. You the GOAT. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. Like I said, you're welcome back on anytime, bro. Absolutely, man. Hey, listen, you be easy. All the fans, y'all be easy. We out. Definitely. As always, Devil Cox Spears, we are out. Peace. See